To get started with adaptive cards in AdBot, we're going to log into the AdBot admin portal. And on the left hand side, under AI integrations, you'll see adaptive card templates. From here, uh, we can create new adaptive cards and we can see the ones that we have access to. We're going to go ahead and create a new one. And we're going to create an adaptive card to collect survey information from users. There are two types of uh, adaptive card templates that you can create. You can create a display type, which is for uh, displaying data in the bot, and then a form type, which can be a multi-input form that the bot serves up and then those values are available for you in flow. So our survey card is going to be a form type. Then uh, we're going to open up the card editor. This adaptive card designer was developed by uh, Microsoft. You can check it out at adaptivecards.io. And what we're going to do is we're going to load a starter template, which we have three different types of starter templates in here. Uh, we're going to load the survey form starter template. One thing that you'll notice on all of this is that the, uh, the items that we want to collect are going to have IDs. And that makes them available in flow for us to uh, do something with that data. We're going to add one more section to this survey just to show how it's editable. The key component is to add an ID to all the fields. And then we'll go ahead and click Save and Close. And what you'll notice is over on the right hand side, well on the left hand side you'll see the adaptive card and how it will look in uh, Teams. And then on the right hand side you'll see all the properties that are going to be available from Flow. So we'll go ahead and hit update card template so that it's saved. And now this card is usable in Flow. After the user fills out this survey, we want to send back another adaptive card to display a confirmation. And this is going to be a display type. Again, opening up the card editor, and we're going to start from this contact card, just because it has an image in the place that we want to use it. And we're going to go ahead and delete all this stuff. So you can see I set IDs on these text fields so that we can supplement them with the user's name after they fill out the survey. So we'll go ahead and hit Save and Update Card Template. Now we have two adaptive cards that we can use in Flow for bot interaction. Let's go on over to Flow to create our survey. We're going to start with a simple keyword intent. We'll make it personal so only we can see it for now. Now the first step is to send the user the survey. And that is inside a uh, get adaptive card response from user. This action will uh, load in all form type adaptive cards to choose from. So we're going to pick the survey card. We're going to set the reply activity so that we keep bot scope. And then uh, there's a couple things to note here. Uh, any choice sets that are in your forms, you can actually uh, change the values that are available. Uh, by, by putting in an array here. Um, the submit button, you can actually supplement that with uh, JSON data here, which will come back in the uh, following action. The, uh, then in the advanced options, you're able to set the default values uh, when they first go over to the user. So anyway, this action is going to send the adaptive card to collect that survey information from the user. The next step is to give them a confirmation. 
And remember, we created a display type adaptive card for that. So in the uh, send adaptive card reply action, this will only load in display type adaptive cards. So we have our survey confirmation here. And you'll see now all the editable properties of our survey confirmation are now available. So we'll add our reply activity. And actually, we want this to be a little bit personal. So we will add a user action to get the user's profile so we can get their name. Adding in the user ID of the trigger. And then we can add their name down here. And we'll leave thanks summary blank so that it uses the default value that's in the adaptive card. And we'll hit save. So now let's test this over in Teams. Type help to make sure the skill exists as a personal skill. There it is, survey. And here's our form adaptive card with our date. Submit. And then our display type adaptive card here. Now if we go back to flow, what you'll notice in here is all of the values that are available in the get adaptive card response from user. The allow contact was that checkbox, the date accessed was the date field, the rating was the choice field, and suggestions was the text box. If you add any other fields into the adaptive card here, making sure you give them an ID, they will be available in flow to do something with. So all we're doing is sending back the survey confirmation, but we could save that data into SharePoint. We could uh, send it to some service where we're collecting survey data. So this is the simplest implementation of adaptive cards, both form and display. Let's take a look at a little bit more advanced scenario. In SharePoint, I've defined an incident reporting list so that uh, incidents like uh, network disruptions, power loss, and uh, security breaches can be reported and kept track of. And let's say we want to manage this or the, uh, the interaction with this through our bot. So over in our adaptive card templates, I've already created a uh, display type template called incident display. You can see that it has an image, it has a title, a description, and then it has what's called a fact set. If we take a look at that, you can basically just continue to add new facts in this fact set, and it's basically a name value pair list in the adaptive card. So now I want to, when I uh, trigger a skill, I want to return a collection of these incidents based on this list in SharePoint. So I've created a flow to do just that, our list incidents flow. So taking a look at this, same keyword type trigger, uh, where we're using the keyword incidents. Then we use a very simple SharePoint get items to our, uh, our incidents list. Next, we're doing a compose to create an associative array of uh, images to use based on the type of incident it is. Now here comes the important part. We're gonna create an array type variable and we're gonna call it cards. Next, we loop through our SharePoint list of items. And we use an action called generate adaptive card. So generate adaptive card, uh, all it does is it creates an adaptive card object that can be appended to that array. So we've selected our incident display uh, adaptive card We've set our thumbnail image equal to a lookup in that associative array. We set our title, our description, and you can see how it breaks out those facts and allows you to assign values to them. So we have date and uh, assign to display name. And then we take that generated adaptive card and we append it 
to our cards array. Finally, we have an action called send adaptive card set reply. And the card set is the array that was defined in flow and populated with our generated adaptive cards. Then you can optionally uh, set it to be carousel style or list style. We chose carousel. So to test this in Teams, we'll go ahead and type incidents. And you can see it returns our carousel of adaptive cards. Now taking this a step further, we want to act upon these incidents individually. So going back to our adaptive card template, we can add some buttons to this. So what we're doing is we're adding submit buttons to our display type adaptive card. So we're adding a button to our adaptive card to allow you to assign this incident to a, to a user. We'll save that. You'll see that the action exists here and we'll update the card template. So now when we go back into our flow, we'll hit edit. In our generate adaptive card, and this would work in a uh, send adaptive card reply as well, you'll see assign incident is now an available property of the adaptive card. So here's where we're going to add some JSON that will allow the click of that assign incident button to trigger another keyword skill and pass in contextual information. So you can see now I've created, it's basically just a JSON, inline JSON object. Keyword is a required property in this object, and that will be the keyword skill that gets kicked off. And then uh, item ID is our contextual property to say which incident we want to uh, do the assignment for. We'll go ahead and save that. And then let's create our assign incident flow. This keyword needs to line up with the keyword that we put in our JSON property. And for the purposes of this, we'll just do a quick send reply. Okay, and let's test that out. So now you can see on each incident, we have a button that says Assign Incident. When I click the Assign Incident button, it now kicks off my assignment flow. So let's go back to that flow. And we can take a look at the run history to get the JSON object that was sent. We can then copy that because we're going to need to parse it out using a parse JSON action to be able to use this value. So to get the values out, we're going to grab triggerbody.adaptiveCard data and our schema we're going to use a sample payload that we had copied. Now to test that out, we'll put our item ID in there. Let's save. 
back to Teams. Test it out. There's ID number two. Go back to the first one. ID one, etc. Now I could go in here and start putting in all the SharePoint bits to actually do the assignment, do a get people response from, from AppBot to get the user from uh, user choice. But for demo purposes, we'll just leave it at this for now. Lots of really cool stuff that you can do with adaptive card templates. And we're really excited to see what our partners and customers and community start doing with them. Thanks for watching.